right, I've just arrived here in Brasov, Romania. Pretty uneventful day. I spent six hours cooped on one of the hottest bus rides I've ever had in a long time. So extremely uncomfortable day and I just want to get down to do some sightseeing before it gets dark. It's about 5 p.m. at this point. So I've got about four hours of daylight left. So I should be able to spend most of my time down in the old town of Brasov. And there's a notorious a pickpocketing vibe in this town, so I gotta at least watch my surroundings a bit. But that said, head downtown to see the old town. I'm not gonna stay overnight just because I want to stay at the Hilton. I have a free night up there, so it's worth me taking the uh, train up to Sigishora, which is supposed to be an amazing town in and of itself, but I won't have to pay for a hotel if I go up there, so probably worth uh, the three-hour detour to see that community here in Romania. And then I'll be back down to Brasov to check out Bram Castle probably on Monday. So you can see the train station here is decked out with the colors of the Romanian flag. The blue, yellow, and red. I just called an Uber so it shouldn't take too long. It looks like he's about six minutes away. Then I'll head down towards the Black Church and all the other sites in Old Town, Brasov. arrived here in the old town of Brasov, Romania. Absolutely stunning historical center. I'm gonna go head down this way. Unfortunately, I have to carry all my luggage, but again, there's absolutely no left luggage at the Brasov train station. For any of you considering a trip down here, technically there is a counter, it's just not staffed, so it's closed and it looks like it's closed permanently. But beautiful setting, can't wait to check this out over the next four hours here in Brasov before I head down to Sigishora. So one thing to be warned about if you come down to Romania from North America, uh, hardly any of the ATMs work, so unless you have a MasterCard or Visa debit card uh, or some other service that's connected at least to the Maestro network. I know many of the Canadian banks only have Cirrus. Um, even the ones that are marked Maestro and Cirrus aren't working. So I'm going to try to find an international bank. I see a Raff Heisen, which I believe is from Germany down the road. So hopefully that'll work. But not a ton of international banks here in Romania if you're looking for one. It might be different in Bucharest, but here in the middle of nowhere, relatively speaking, uh, there's not much to choose from. Really beautiful architecture here, as you can see. And over here on the hill overlooking the city, you can see the iconic Brasov Hollywood type sign up on the hillside. And here's the main square right here with a Starbucks on the corner. So that's where I'm gonna go get hydrated or dehydrated depending on your perspective in a few minutes here. Absolutely beautiful day in Brasov, Romania. So I'm in the thick of the tourist hordes at this point. Uh, there's mass bus tours basically coming up from Bucharest every day. So the plaza was just a moment ago full of pretty much dozens and dozens of people crowding together trying to get back on their bus. So definitely takes away from the atmosphere of this place, but absolutely beautiful setting nonetheless. So this is the museum, it looks like, of Brasov, probably the old town hall built in 1420 by the looks of it. And tons of outdoor patio seating. There's a little gondola over there also that heads up, I think it's a funicular actually, that heads up the hillside. Maybe a, actually I think it is a gondola that goes up the hillside to the top by the brush off sign. But an absolutely beautiful main plaza town square here in the center of Brasov. Stunning. So 
So this is evidently the place to be on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and say no more, uh, the Starbucks right next to the historic block church, medieval church. It is what it is. But they always seem to scoop up prime real estate. It's actually unbelievable how much money they spend on real estate. Definitely a cute town, though completely overrun with tourists. So it's not necessarily authentic at this stage, but it is beautiful nonetheless. I'm gonna go head down towards the Starbucks and get myself a cold drink. So this is the famous Black Church of Brashoff. I'm gonna head over to the other side of it to take a picture. Maybe after the coffee though, no rush. And some decent products here that you can get in North America. So hot, it is unbelievable. Anyway, cooling down, thankfully. So one thing I found really interesting about uh, Romania is that its language is 70% related to Italian. So uh, it's, I was wondering why I saw so many Romanian tourists when I was in Italy and vice versa by the looks of it. So that explains it. I finished up at Starbucks and I'm on my way to check out the front of the Black Church now. Pretty stunning Gothic architecture. And the requisite buskers coming into earshot now. Beautiful though. Wow, really ornate doors. So the buskers actually turned out to be a live band. We're right in front of the black church here, next to a coffee shop. It's a bit of a step up from a open mic night. They're actually pretty good. Really beautiful city, Brashov. Yeah, I'm not too eager to go sightsee the entire city tonight because I am going to be back here in a couple of days. So right along this pretty nondescript street in the heart of Old Town Brashov, you will find the Strada Stori, I think it's called, or Strada Svoro, which is the most narrow street in the world. So this street is only four feet wide. And as you can see, it's quite the hit with tourists doing the arm width measure and so forth. But yeah, it's a very narrow road. Cool. And here we go. Rolling my backpack through here so it's a bit noisy. It's pretty narrow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It is pretty narrow. I mean, I wouldn't say it's wowing me by any measure but probably a fire hazard. Ooh, it is getting tight though.
Murray to merge down the other side to an odd sculpture. Anyway, that's about it. Strada Shvori, the most narrow road in the world. All right, that is about it. I'm emerging back where I started here, saying goodbye to Strada Shvori. Anyway, I'm gonna head down to the city gate, which is right up ahead here. And I'm quickly running out of time here in Brashov. I definitely enjoyed my time here in Brashov. I'm definitely gonna come back too. There's a lot more to see and do around here, but this is a great introduction to the city and a good way to use this layover time between my bus from Yash and my train to Sigishwara. So Sigishwara is actually about 117 kilometers north of Brashov. Takes three hours by rail though. So the train is rolling at 30 kilometers an hour roughly. Pretty slow service nationwide due to the old rolling stock that they use and the railroad is just in horrible condition. So over here is one of the many gates of the city. This is towards the, I guess, the western end of Old Town Brashov. And the major gate, I think it's the St. Ekaterina, Ekaterina Gate, is right down there. So that's where I'm headed next. So evidently I was too distracted by all the beautiful buildings around here that I missed the entrance to the park and there's a gated fence in front of me now. But anyway, I don't want to walk all the way back, but this is the gate on the western end of the old town. I believe it's called the Ekaterina Gate. I am headed off to the train station now to head to Segeshora. All right, I made it on time here to Brashov Railway Station. I'm catching the 9.28 p.m. departure to Sigishwara, which is three hours up the road, 117 kilometers. So it's only averaging about 35 kilometers an hour. All right, I made it to the train station and headed to track four now to head to Sigishwara. Sounds like it's getting in right now. Oh, other side. Mine's not here yet. So this train ride will take about three hours. Uh, we are heading uphill into the Carpathian Mountains. So it's a slow go, but it should be a smooth trip. I'll get there at about 12.35 in the morning. So clearly the country of Romania is kind of the exception in Europe when it comes to trains. Uh, just their infrastructure is so historic, I suppose is the best word for it, that they really can't handle any modern day technology or speed I suppose so they got to take it really easy on their rails from what I was told by a local it looks pretty modern though at least the train cars are updated and so forth they are just slow It's arrived. I believe this is wagon three. It is just about one o'clock in the morning, but I've arrived here in Sigishwara. A uh, lovely little mountain resort town here. 
about 120 kilometers north of Brashov. So I got to walk to the hotel and I have a general sense of where I'm going. My cell phone has now died, so kind of out of luck in that respect, but I do remember it's a right, a very long left for about a kilometer, and then another left. It is very dark though. I'm not too concerned about safety though. This place is a, a pretty respected resort town, so I'd be shocked. It's a residential neighborhood. It should be about 650 more meters. Not too far, actually. It's about a nine minute walk in total to get down to the Hilton. It's a really beautiful church right here on the riverfront in Sigishwara. So I'm only about, oh, 50 meters away from my hotel at this point. It's just across the river there and I'll be there. But beautiful lit churches at this hour. Absolutely stunning place so far. And I've only seen one street. And there it is right there, the double tree. So it's not too far at all. Pretty easy walk actually. It was only about, yeah, five, seven minutes from the train station. Not bad at all, actually. But yeah, absolutely stunning church here in the center of the old town of Sigishwara. And looking across the way, I believe the actual old town is on this side. Another historic building there that you can barely see, but definitely worth the view here at this hour. Beautiful. All right, I've arrived here at the Double Tree by Hilton and I'm ready to check in for the night. It's a long journey in coming here. I have been sitting far too long today. You can see it's pretty cute. They got some antique furniture, some questionable or vintage furniture, little coffee bar and desk area, television for the living room, and this really cool loft that reminds me a ton of the Holiday Inn in Canmore, Alberta, where everything, I haven't even been up here yet, so this is all new to me, but the bed is actually on another floor. And does it have a view? Kind of. Unlike the Canmore Holiday Inn, however, there is no jacuzzi in here. But it would be quite romantic nonetheless. And a cute little setup for sure. But yeah, that is it. The double tree. This is an upgrade to, I didn't really catch what kind of room that was. The guy had a really thick accent, but I will believe him that this is a substantial upgrade. Double trees are a lower end chain in the Hilton brand, so it makes sense that it's not, you know, out of this world amazing like a Hilton would be. But, you know, it's reasonable and it's comfortable, clean, it has everything that you need that you would expect from a Hilton brand. Just a little bit less posh, I would say, in this particular room. But that said, I'm going to bed. I am wiped. I've been on a bus pretty much the entire day, apart from a few hours of sightseeing and brush off. So I'm going to sleep. See you tomorrow.